Hello, it's Joe Lyons, and in this video I'm demonstrating a script I found in the forum, which it's it's titled Find Text, however, it's a little misleading because it really can find anything on the screen, um, whatever type of pattern you're looking at. Text obviously is one of them, but it can find icons and whatnot. It's similar to Image Search, which is built into AutoHotKey, however, Image Search has a different approach, and it's, in my little limited experience, been... Um, this is much more robust than using that one. Also, in this version, you don't have to save a local file, uh, which is great because then you don't have to have files to keep track of and their paths and everything else. Um, the script, you can download it. I'll, I'll give you the URL, but it's, it's right here in the video. And um, before we launch it, there are some parameters you can change. The biggest one, which I'll, I'll demonstrate later, um, but you'll understand it. But this, this right here, you can change the size of the area you're going to capture for identifying what you want to find. And I, this was, I forget what the actual default settings were. It was a little bit smaller than this. I preferred to have it a little bit bigger just because I, I don't mind trimming it a little more and having a little bit bigger range and, and not have to worry about it. Uh, there are other parameters you can set and some of the documentation goes through it. However, for the most part, the, it, it works pretty solid out of the box. So I don't know if I would mess with those. Um, I think with some experience and some practice, you might figure it out. The other thing to note is the uh, hotkey is F12. So after we launch it, which is what I'll do here, um, there's now my little magnifying glass. Oh, I guess I already had it running. Okay. So it's now it's now don't keep waiting. All right. So it's running here now and I'm going to hit F12. And now it is going to pop open. There we go. And it's, this is the, the base window here. And, and this, to me, um, this script is really well designed. It just took me a little bit of playing with to understand what I wanted to do. And so let's say, um, for whatever reason, I, I'm here in my old version of PaintShop Pro, and I wanted to, let's say I wanted to find where extravaganza.png is on the page, right? And of course, I could search again. I could search for this, or I can search for the text. Um, I'm going to search for that text. So I'm going to hit Capture, and this is what this red um, area is. That's the area you're going to look at that you want to capture. You know what? Let's, let's go with email so I don't have to try to say extravaganza over and over. Um, so here's the other interesting thing that it just seems a little awkward at first until you get used to it. It's great. Um, is what you do is you click and then when you move your mouse away, that's when it, when it's the moving the mouse away that makes it realize that, um, you now have an image that you want to, um, start trimming down to where you're going to find it. And so this is the image it saved. And let me walk through some of the settings here. Cause there's a lot of settings and it was, it was a bit confusing to me at first. Um, let's see. First off is what you want to do is of course, identify just the spot, the text or the image that you want to um, search for. And so these are search. This will trim off one pixel from the left, one pixel from the right, one pixel from the top, one pixel from the bottom. Um, and it also has built in so you can go by threes if you want to truncate it more and more. And so let's see, I'll go to there. And I'm going to shrink this down. Ooh, that was close. I'll get one more. Yeah, two here. And now, yeah, I got some room at top. And I'll go to there, and and a, um, this is come back here. Now, if you know the surrounding area is always going to be you know blank, then by all means you can do that, right? However, just leave it as it was. However, I, I want to look just for this. The other thing is, let's say I noticed um, in this one image capture there was a little tweak I wanted to make to it. Um, actually, you know, I need to introduce a different setting first. Um, so you have to choose whether you want to do color or grayscale. And I was reading some of the, the documentation and tips on it. And um, I, I can't find a really good reason of why you'd use one over the other. Um, the, the, this, there's a threshold number here. Let's say we're going to do grayscale and it'll, it'll dump it into basically black and white. And then this threshold will automatically detect and get set for you. And the threshold has to do with um, basically at what shade, because you're flattening this to two colors, right? At what shade does something stay white and what shade does something go black? And this is where, let's say I want to modify it and I noticed, you know what, this dot here really shouldn't be here, right? I can get rid of it. I can put it, things back in, right? Um, or I can hit reset and it, it reverts it back to the original one. I'm going to go back and apply this again. And this time I'm not going to modify it because I'm, I'm happy with that. Oh, and I reset it. So I got to trim it down again. So here we go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, definitely come here. And 
There we go. Okay. And, you know, let's get rid of a couple more here. There we go. That looks close enough to me. Um, the gray, the, the color you can also do, and, and I suppose with certain images that you're going to have color in them, it, it might do a better job, but it still flattens it out to two colors, basically. Uh, and it's so, I, I'm not sure why you'd use one over the other. However, once you're, you're, you've done this part, this is, this is the part I just love, right? Is I can hit, um, okay. And what that does is it dumps it back into this menu, menu, and I can, I can come over here and I can hit test and it, it's going to say, oh, look, it, it did find it. It gives you the, uh, how long it took to do it and it gives you the location. And then once I hit okay, you're going to notice my mouse is going to move over to email.png. So it's not me. So actually I'll, I'll use the enter key just to prove that. So I'm going to hit okay. And there it goes. It moved it over there for it. And that's how I know it actually found that. Now, one thing with just any search thing, right? It's if there was multiple of email.png, it would have found the first one, I believe, starting at the top, probably starting the top left to right. Um, what you can do is you can define the grid area you want to search, and that's how you can work around if there's more than one of the text that you want to find. If you want to find the second one, right, you could probably exclude a certain range or only look in a certain area. Um, once you're happy with what this is another cool feature is um, this is this has to do with the code here. Um, and and first let me show you if I click in here this this long string uh, actually I didn't I didn't add in you know what I don't want to redo it um if I had added in you know what I'm gonna have to redo it just to to, to show it it's it's much better um so we come in here all right we're back in there again and we'll do this faster because I think it, it's going to be pretty reliable because that white space around everything Ooh, probably a little too much, but you know what? It should be fine. There we go. Go to grayscale. Um, and what I want to do is add a comment. So I'm going to say email.png text. This is a comment that I'll be able to later see in my code. Um, and I'll show you here um, once I hit OK why it's so important. Because So here's what I just typed, email.png.text. Did you see this come up here? This, um, everything to the right of, I suppose, this star, I'm not sure actually where it begins, but um, all of this information here, this is some encrypted way to represent these underscores and O's. And so that's what the actual pattern matching is looking for. And, and amazing to me, it actually works really, really well. It's highly reliable. Let's, let's go ahead and test this again and uh, watch it, all, it. See my mouse move over? So just jump to it. And um, that's basically, that's the, the big how to use it. Now, once you get it, um, what you want to do is, depending on what you've done already, if I hit copy without that on there, now when I, let me go to a new thing and I hit paste, it is going to give me this top part, which of course I could have come in here and hit copy too, right? Um, it gives me this top part. However, if I didn't have the find text function in my library, I can, I can click this and that way it's going to insert my find text function. So let me copy it now and watch when I, I'm going to highlight, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to paste it and it has, um, it's still not bad, right? 367 lines now instead of just, um, nine, right? So, but if you put the find text in your library, you don't have to include this every time, which is, is awesome about auto hotkeys. You can have it library. You don't need to include command. You just put it in your library. Um, but that's basically it. Um, and using the, the function, I was playing around a little bit. I'm going to demonstrate it um, in a second video because I want to keep these videos short of after you find it, you know, how would you click on it? Can you right click? Can you just move your mouse there and or send text? And I was playing around with that. Um, basically, the OK that gets returned is an object. And so the first one, um, I forget, it's X, obviously. And, and so because this mouse move has to... Um, Actually, that's not in the in the clicks. They need to have um, you can't have a function in there or an expression, and so it's saved as a variable. But in the second video, I'm gonna demonstrate what these all mean. And actually, let me let me let me show you here. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's say finding email.png, and so um, the other thing is, of course, the the I'm going to close this for now. The the text has to be visible on the on the page when you run it. So what I'm going to do up here. Oh, look at that! It um unfortunately it saved this as a PNG file. Uh, 
Um, there we go. And what I did was I just created a hotkey that will launch this for me. And so now I'm going to save this. Let me exit out. Of, oh, I don't have any scripts running. I'm going to run it. And now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to, I can hide it, right? It doesn't matter because it's running in the background. When I hit my hotkey, see how it jumped over to it, right? That wasn't me. The That was the script finding it on the page. It's to me lightning fast. I've, I've tested it several times a day and it seems very robust. Um, let me, let me actually know it while we're here. Uh, let me, let me get back into here and just demonstrate also, um, Oh, I closed it. So I have a hotkey to launch that script. Thankfully, I actually remembered what I used. Um, so, so this just brought it back up. I'm going to capture and what I wanted to demonstrate. Oops, I should not have done that. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. So I, I was going to show I can capture, you know what? This still doesn't, doesn't do what I wanted. So let me get back to here, make this visible. And now I'm going to say I wanted to capture, um, let's go with stick, stick data cowboy guy. So this is what it's going to capture. Um, I'm going to truncate it a little bit. I have no idea why, just to kind of zoom in a little. What you want to do is, you know, try not to get things that are going to change. So I'll adapt it to black and white, the grayscale. Um, and I'm not going to worry about a comment. I'm just going to hit OK because I want to test it. So now let's test it. It found it. Now my mouse should move over there. There it goes. Right. So the point being, it doesn't, ha it doesn't have to search for text, even though that's in the name. You can search for any sort of a pattern, right? And, and text obviously is a pattern, but other things are patterns too. Uh, the, the, so the caveats of all of these tools, image search in this, is um, remember that when you're trying to do things like on different programs, the zoom level will have an effect on it the dimensions, your your fonts. So if you give something or you're using on a second computer and the font default font on the other computer isn't the same, it's probably not gonna match. If you pass it to someone and their, what is it, their um, text size font is different of, of the DPI type stuff, that'll screw things up. If their browser is zoomed in or out, um, there's a lot of little subtle things that can affect this. It I think it's highly reliable on one computer um, however, multiple computers, it, it's where it's going to be trickier to figure out how to do it, um, how to make it stable. And, and even on my computer, because my resolutions are different um, sizes, let's say I'm looking at this one right now, which is a bigger resolution, but I move this um, PaintShop Pro program onto a smaller resolution that has a different um, X to Y ratio. That, of course, also will cause problems, even though I'm on the same computer. So those are just things to watch out for when you're doing it. However, the fact that I can crank this thing out in no time is just awesome. All right. Thanks.